I got to I want to ask y'all a question. How many of y'all got family members that's incarcerated? Locked up. How many of y'all got family members that's locked up? You got one, two, three, see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen of y'all in here got family members that's locked up. Nineteen of y'all. Don't you see y'all see those numbers? I first started selling drugs when I was nine. My mother, she rarely was there. She was, she was involved in drugs. You know, sometimes we didn't have enough to eat. You know what I'm saying? I would go in the store and steal me something to feed myself. And that kind of got, led me to more crime. Y'all gonna, y'all about to get to high school and be like, man, I'm in heaven in here. Because there's going to be so many females nice looking that y'all see. And then it's going to be so much activity that goes with that. And then comes activity. You know what next come? Finances. Y'all start stealing out of stores and still breaking into garages, breaking into houses, stealing bikes. And you know, I got caught up in some armed robberies. So this is where the temptation comes. You be like, man, I'm working here. And I really ain't making enough money. I can do this, do this, sell a couple ecstasy, give me a capsule of ecstasy pills, flip them and do this. I can give me a couple pounds or a couple ounces, do this and do this. I can ride somebody real quick and hit me a couple licks or something. When I'm coming down the street, they say, OK, here come on now. So they waiting on when I pull up, I get out and talk to some females that I knew. They jump out on me and approach me with a weapon. And we exchanged words, and after we exchanged words, I had a weapon on me as well, you know. So I waited on the opportunity to, to, and when I when the opportunity came, guy shut his, he was drinking, set his cup on the car. That's when I shot both of them, and in, and one of them ended up dying. I knew that I had did something that I couldn't take back. You get arrested, your freedom is taken from you, and you're forced to be confined in a place that you don't want to be at. That's the first part of it. And I spent a total out of 30 years of 16 summers incarcerated. The second part about it is when you get out of prison, you, hit, you, got, a, you got a stigma a stigma on you that will stay with you for the rest of your life. I felt that I had to change, and I knew it had to start with me. So what I started to do is I actually started to study. I started studying a lot of black history, and it made me love my people more and love myself more. Right now, y'all, like I explain to y'all all the time, y'all have opportunity, and that is one of y'all most valuable assets to have is y'all opportunity, meaning that y'all not hindered from anything. Then I started writing. The Life and Times of Little Ed. This is um, a five book series right here that I, that I wrote and illustrated. And this one is already in print right here on wardenbooks.com, booksurge.com. And I have copies that I sell on my own as well. Everywhere I go trying to get a job, they say, you've been convicted of a felony. You can't open up this business because you got a felony. You can't get this long because you got a felony. They won't even let me teach. If I say, man, you know, they say, if I say, man, you know what, man, I want to teach. They don't even want me in their schools. When I, when I come out and, I, and, I, and I'm able to talk to them, it, 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 it gives me something. I know I have to stay on my toes because I want them to be able to understand that you can come through anything and you can still make it. So I hope that one time, if, if something ever come up and you tempted that you can think about uh, individuals like, like me, think about the decisions that I made to, to, and, and that will prevent you from making those decisions. You're all right. Yeah.